What's going on guys? Justin here and welcome back to our 16th example video following our course on proof writing. Now today's example video is going to be some ex simple examples of relations. Mostly we're going to be graphing them and listing their elements. So let's go ahead and get into this first example. So this one says let A equal the set 1, 2, 3, and 6 and we want to represent the relation R by listing its elements and as a graph. So the relation on our set A is going to be all pairs X and Y such that X squared is less than Y. So let's go ahead and draw out our elements here. So this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, and this will be six. So right away we can notice that one squared is less than or equal to itself. So let's go ahead and make a loop to itself here great. And one squared will also be less than or equal to all of the other elements in this set here. So let's go ahead and draw arrows there. So we'll have one from one to two, like that. And then we'll have one from one to three. And then lastly, we'll have one from one to six. Okay, great. Now I want to notice that six will not have an arrow pointed to any of the elements in the set as six squared is not going to be less than or equal to any of the elements in this set. And the same goes for three as three squared is nine and that is not gonna be less than or equal to any of the other elements in this set. So our only other option here will be the number two and two squared is in fact less than or equal to the number six. So let's go ahead and draw our final arrow for this graph here. So that will go from two to six, great. So let's go ahead and write out the elements of our set R here. So R is going to be equal to, let's see, we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 6. And then lastly, we have 2, 6. Like that. Great. So that is all the elements of this set here. So that finishes this quick problem off. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. Great, so for this relation we are using the same set of 1, 2, 3, and 6, but this time our relation will be all pairs x and y such that x divides y. So once again let's go ahead and draw out our numbers 1 through 6, so we'll have 1, 2, 3, and finally 6. <clears throat> and I've tried to leave some room between the numbers and the dots there so that we can have room to draw arrows for this example. So right away I want to notice that this is a reflexive relation as 1 will divide itself, 2 will divide itself, 3 will divide itself, and 6 will divide itself. So let's go ahead and draw arrows from each of these points to themselves before we get into the more interesting relations. Okay, there we go. So we have each of these is an arrow pointed to itself. And similarly, one will divide every single element of our set A here, so we can draw an arrow from one to each of these elements as well. So let's start with two, like that. Then we'll have an arrow from one to three. And lastly, let's draw an arrow from one to six. So now that we have everything that one divides, let's go ahead and look at the things that two will divide. Well, two will not divide one or three, but it will divide six. So let's go ahead and draw an arrow from two to six, just like that, great. And three will also divide six. So let's draw an arrow from three to six. Awesome. So that takes care of our graph of this relation here. So let's go ahead and write out all the elements that we have just drawn for our graph here. So our relation R is going to be the set. Well, let's do all of the elements with themselves first. So we'll have one, one, two, two, three, three, and six, six. And from there, let's do the ones with one. So we'll have one, two, one, three, and one, six. And then we only have two elements left, and that is two, six, and three, six. So two, six, and three, six. Great, so that completes our graph and our list of elements for this relation here. So let's get into another relation. All right, so for this one, once again, we have the same set of elements, A, 1, 2, 3, and 6, and this relation is pairs X and Y such that X plus Y is even. So let's go ahead and draw out our dots once again for our graph here. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, and 6. Great. So right away I want to once again notice that this relation is reflexive as 1 plus 1 is 2 which is even, 2 plus 2 is 4 which is even, 3 plus 3 is 6 which is even, and 6 plus 6 is 12 which is even. So let me go ahead and take care of those arrows for the reflexiveness and then we'll go ahead and get into the more interesting ones. 
All right, there we go. So next I want to notice that this relation is symmetric because if one plus three, for example, is even, which it is, it is four, then three plus one is even. So we can draw arrows both ways. So I'm gonna actually use a different color for those relations here. So I'm gonna draw a blue arrow from one to three for the example I just gave. So one, two, three. And then we will have a returning arrow from three to one for the same reason. Great. And I will do similarly for our two and six here. Two plus six is eight, and six plus two is also eight. There we go, okay, great. And so that takes care of all elements of our relation here, as one plus two will be odd, two plus three is odd, three plus six is odd, etc. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and write out all the elements that we've just drawn in this graph here so we can have them listed for our set R. So let's take care of the reflexiveness first. We have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 6, 6. And then we can do our two symmetric pairs next where we have 1, 3, 3, 1, and then our last pair will be 2, 6, and 6, 2. Okay, great. So that finishes off the graph and list of elements for this relation. So let's go ahead and get into our next relation. Okay, so for this relation, we have the relation R, which is the list of elements A, B, A, C, C, B, and B, C on our set A, which is A, B, and C. And we want to talk about if R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, and if a property does hold, say why. Well, we've already kind of been doing that as I just kind of illustrated some of those properties in the last problem, but let's go ahead and graph this relation here so that it's more clear which of these properties may or may not be true. So we have our elements A, B, and C. And then we'll just draw lines for our pairs. So the first element of our relation is A, B, so let's draw an arrow from A to B just like that. Our next element is A, C, so we'll draw one above that from A to C, just like that. And then we have C to B, so that's a returning arrow. I'll draw the arrows that go backwards in blue here just to hopefully make the picture a little more clear maybe. So we have an arrow from C to B. And then lastly, we have an arrow from B to C, like that. So we want to know if R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So let me write out those three and then we can kind of give an answer to each of them. So starting off with reflexive, this is no. No, this is not a reflexive relation. And that is because we have no arrows, A to itself, B to itself, or C to itself. We have none of those. And even if we had one of them, they need to all be to themselves in order for this to be reflexive. So it is definitely not reflexive. Next, we wanna know if it's symmetric, and it is not symmetric. Now we do have an arrow from B to C, and from C back to B, but we do not have an arrow from B back to A, and we do have one from A to B. So this will be no. And I'll go ahead and write out why. That's because we have AB in R and BA is not in R. Great. And finally, we want to know if this is transitive. Now, that means if we have AB and BC, do we have AC? And in fact, we have that exact example I just gave. We have A to B and B to C, but we also have A to C. So this is, in fact, transitive, yes. And that is because we have A, B, and B, C in R with A, C in R. Great. So that finishes off these three properties here. Like I said, reflexive is not because we have no arrows from these elements to themselves. Okay, so let's get into our last example of relations. So this one says there are 16 possible different relations R on the set A, which is just the set of two elements A and B, and we want to describe all of them. And we're gonna do this by drawing 16 different pictures. And then we want to talk about whether they are reflexive, symmetric, or transitive. I'm just going to say that verbally as opposed to writing it. That way we can save some time. So let me go ahead and write out 1, 2, 16, and we can start filling in the different boxes. Okay, great. So now we have 16 like little boxes here with A and B in each of them. So now we just have to fill out every possible relation between A and B. So let's just start getting into it. So first of all, let's do the first two really obvious ones, uh, the relations that don't really give us any information. 
The first will just be the empty set, which is just that there's no relation between any elements in the set, which isn't very interesting, but that's just the first one with no changes. Um, there's no arrows to any elements of the set there. So that is obviously neither transitive, symmetric, or reflexive. The second set that's not very interesting is every single relation is possible. So that will be A to itself, B to itself, A to B, and B to A. Great. And so that will be all three. We can see it's reflexive because we have A to itself and B to itself. It's symmetric because we have A to B and B to A. And although there are only two elements in the set, it follows that if we have reflexiveness and symmetricness, then we will have transitiveness. So this is actually all three. So that's it for our first two kind of boring examples. So now we'll just kind of process of elimination, get rid of all the other possible combinations. So for this first one, we'll have the relation where it's just A to itself. It is not reflexive because B is not an element to itself. And I guess you could say that this is symmetric as we have A related to itself, which is the same thing as A related to itself, but I guess that's kind of trivial. And the same will be for this fourth case where B is related to itself. All the things I just said about three will apply to this one as well. And for number five, we'll go ahead and do where A and B are related just to themselves. And this one will definitely be reflexive as we have A and B to themselves. And the same thing I said for three and four will apply to this for uh, symmetry purposes. And since we have both, then I guess you could say it is transitive as well. So for number six, this will be the relation where just A is related to B. And we have a none of our three properties for that. Then for seven, we'll have just B is related to A. Uh, which is the same as our number six case. And then for number eight, we will have A and B are related to each other, which will definitely be symmetric, but that is all as we have no elements related to themselves. So for number nine, we'll have A is related to itself and A is related to B. And that will be neither reflexive nor symmetric as we do not have B related to itself and we do not have B related to A. Then for number 10, we'll still have A related to itself, but this time we'll have B related to A, which will be none of our three properties for the same reason as what I said for number nine. Then for number 11, we will have B related to itself in an arrow from A to B, and that is the same as the other cases in this row. And then lastly for this row, we will have B related to itself and then B to A, which is once again, none of our three properties there. So for 13 and 14, we will have A and B related to themselves. And then for 13, we will have A is related to B as well. And we can see that that is reflexive but not symmetric. And the same logic we will use for 14 where we have A and B related to themselves, but B is related to A. And then for our last two cases, we will have when A is related to itself and A is related to B and B is related to A. And that is symmetric, but not reflexive as B is not related to itself. And it is not transitive because it's not reflexive. And then for 16, we will have that B is related to itself. A is related to B and B is related to A. And once again, this is symmetric, but it is not reflexive. Okay, great. So that finishes our 16 possible relations on the set, just A and B. And that finishes our last problem for this example video off. Sorry that this was kind of a quick one, but we are just getting into relations here. So we want to make sure that they are well understood before we get into more complicated stuff. And I think that's a good place to stop.